Hello and welcome to this week's episode of On The Road Again. Today is a little bit different because we want to do an in-depth review of our own Eldis Majestic 150. So we're going to start by talking about the outside, we'll then go through the inside and we're going to share with you the things that we like and the things that we wish were different. So this is going to be another one of our honest reviews. So let's get on with the show. Hi, we're James and Rob and this is our dog Oscar. It's a really steep learning curve when you start your motorhome, campervan or caravan journey and there is lots that we wish we had known. So we decided to document what we've learned and share with you our adventures as we head out on the road again. So we'll start at the front. So this is uh, built on a Peugeot Boxer and we've upgraded it to a 160 brake horsepower. It's a manual and of course it's a diesel engine. So let's just have a uh, start by having a look inside the driver's point. Okay, so there's nothing too much exciting to say. We, th This van is an upgraded version, so it's got the built-in climate control, cruise control. It's got a sat-nav, but to be quite honest, it's a TomTom sat-nav that isn't specialist to the uh, motorhome, so that isn't so useful. I just don't know why they don't sort that out. Um, and as we said, it's a six-speed manual. And because it's an upgraded engine, it's pretty nifty for the size of a 7.4 meter van. And it does between about 27 and 30 miles per gallon, depending on how you're driving. I think if you're driving at 60 consistently on the motorway, you're gonna get 30, but when you get to 65 or in the country lanes, you're closer to 27 miles per gallon. Obviously, like most vans, it's got the uh, built-in covers, which are great for, oops, great for making sure it's dark at night, and we've also got the skylight here which is really good for adding in more light and of course again you've got a cover on there and you can actually open that up as well so you, there's loads of light in the van which um, which is really great other than that obviously these seats swivel round so that you've got what they call the captain's chairs uh, so that you can turn it's also got adjustable armrests which is really useful when you're along on a long drive just to kind of relax yourself and the cruise control also is super useful when you're on a long drive just to keep your foot from getting too tired by having to constantly keep it on the accelerator. That's about it. It has, at the front, we've got two USB points. So one here and one down here. And of course, you've also got your 12 volt cigarette lighter. Now, actually on another episode of the podcast, I'll talk about this, but we bought these Apple tags. They're 25 quid each. And it means I can track wherever these car keys are, which is super good. We've also got one hidden in the van and we've also got one on each of our bikes. So you can always track them. This van comes with a tracker and an immobilizer. So the security is pretty good. We've also got a steering lock and we've also got this ATE pedal lock, which I really recommend. We're not an affiliate or anything, but this is really great. So you just put this under the pedals. And of course, this deters people. It doesn't stop them, but it slows them down, which is kind of what your goal would be. Um, and, and our van, where we're filming now, this now, is in our storage facility, which is super secure anyway. But if I start the van up, hopefully you're still going to be able to hear me. You can then see the dash. So now we've got our radio. You can connect your phone to it. So, And then we've got the sat-nav, which, as I say, is a TomTom sat-nav. To be quite honest, we don't really use this but you can program in that. You obviously can connect your phone and there's all sorts of other travel information that you can get um, as you travel. So you've got a trip computer, which is useful to see your fuel consumption. You've also got a compass should you need it and a clock if you want to leave that on your setting. So that's the, the screen. The other th really useful thing about the front here, which I know a lot of people have this and they don't quite know what it is. So just to say, if you pull it up and then you drop this down and you're using your sat nav on your phone which is what we do you can just simply put your phone in there lock that up and now you've got your phone in a really secure position the other thing that this this comes with is a reversing camera which is super useful we actually moved it up slightly so that we can use it as a rear view camera as well as a reversing camera you mean the ca we moved the cameras yeah. up slightly yeah sorry yeah move the camera up slightly so that we can see it because Otherwise, it was pointing right down so you could see when you were reversing, but you couldn't see anything else. This is really great, as well as obviously using your wing mirrors when you're driving. So if you've got one of these and you've never used it, then just pull it up at the back. You have to be quite firm, and then you can use it as, um, as a lock or put your iPad in or whatever you want. And it doesn't really get in the way. You've also got over here a 
upper glove compartment and the thing that's really good about this is it's connected to the air conditioning so if you put a couple of cans of coke in there while you're driving it will keep them cold and that's great obviously or when you're driving water. yeah or whatever you like to drink and then you've got your glove compartment down here more storage here and then in the bins the side of the drivers and passengers you've got cup holders and one thing i don't really like about this van at the front is that as a driver when you're picking your cup up from here it's fine but if you're driving and trying to put it down here that's a long way to reach and keep your eyes focused on the road so that it would be better if there was like on the passenger side there's a cup holder up here it would be better if there was one more accessible to your hands but anyway that's a minor minor point so that's the um the, the driving part of this let's go and look around the rest of the van at some of the other aspects of it Okay, so now let's just have a quick look around the van. So first of all, the van is 7.4 meters long. So it's a long van. And to be honest, with our bike racks on the back as well, which you'll see in a minute, it takes it closer to eight meters. And the van's 2.3 meters wide. And it's three and a half tons overall maximum weight. And I think the payload on here is pretty good. It's about 500, 600. So it's pretty, lots of room for things like your bikes and so on, and obviously additional people. The first point we've got here is the toilet cassette, which you really don't need to see because we've all seen a toilet cassette and there's plenty of videos showing us how to um, open them. Then we have the fridge vents here and we've got the vents to put on in the winter to keep all of that safe. And then around here, we have the leisure battery, so, and the power connecting point. So leisure battery, just one leisure battery, and then your electric point here, and then you put your cable through here, and then you can lock it up. So that's all nice and secure. If you wanna have an external shower, you've got your external shower point here, and the van comes with the shower attachments. And then here we have our water fill point. Now the, on these Eldest vans, the water point is literally just something that you shove in and you need to hold it. And to be quite honest, there's a few times where James and I have got soaking wet when the Hose has flown out as we're filling up and covered and gone berserk and covered water everywhere. Oops. And then next to the water points, we've got entry to the underbed storage. So this is your only garage space. So what we tend to do is make sure that our electricity uh, cable and also our hose are really accessible. And we'll show you more of this from the inside, but this is how you access it from the outside. So we would use this to access our chairs, our table, our power cord and our water points. And then you can see on here that we have got a bike rack, which we installed ourselves. You know, you can ask the factory to fit it for you and they charge you a crazy amount of money. We bought the bike rack online for a couple of hundred quid and then we installed it ourselves and it wasn't that difficult once we had the right tools. And on the bike rack, we've got two electric bikes, which are not that heavy. They're about 15 or 16 kilos each. So that's 30, 32 kilos. And we bought a cover and obviously a, a, a warning sign. You can see up here, that we've got the rear view camera that I showed you and you can see that we've moved it up slightly, brake light, and then you can see there's the TV aerial uh, above that. So as we move round to the passenger side, we have our, I keep using all the wrong keys, we've got our gas here. And good thing in here is that we've got room for two gas bottles and we've also got our wedges and our ramps in case we get stuck and we've ha we haven't changed the one bottle yet so we don't use the gas that much um, but you know the times we have had to use it where we've had power carts have been off grid or um, we've been using the gas in the cooker or for the heating you know we haven't even got through one bottle in, a, in, in nine months so that's pretty good. Round here down here we've got our clean water point and I actually missed on the other side we've got our grey waste. Now what's really annoying about these taps is that they are really, really narrow. So I know there's a lot of people that um, have changed these to make them wider, but what we've done that really solves the problem is that we've bought a Wastemaster. We actually bought this second hand for about 30 quid, and this is a fantastic, really should have a device. So anywhere we are parked, we will just put this under the gray water, leave the gray water tap open, and then once a day or once every couple of days, go and empty this and it's really straightforward and that is so much better than getting to the end of your site especially if you're on a larger um, site and they've got the waste points that you know the grids where you drive over them and you can just be stuck there for like literally 15 20 minutes trying to empty your water so doing it this way we're constantly having the water emptied 
part of what came with the van is this uh, two, uh, Dometic rather uh, awning, which is super useful. And we use it all the time. As everybody says, just be really mindful about not having it open in the wind. We just bought some straps for this, so we'll see how that goes. And then another really useful thing on this side by the door is that we've got an external gas point. So we have a Kadak to hob cooker and we always use this outside. Well, at first I always thought, why on earth would you want that? Because surely you cook it in the van. And then of course we cooked in the van like so many people do. And then we realized that it makes a lot of smells. <laughs> so and this is great. Anytime we can cook outside, we do. And of course food could taste better as well. So the diesel point is here and you've got your ad blue. And some people say that it's quite difficult filling this up, but ours just came on when we were coming back from Scotland. Um, we bought, uh, I think like a 10 litre bottle of ad blue stuck the hose in filled it up and then the light went off straight away so that was good so you just have to stay on top of that i think about every 1500 miles that light's going to come on and so you then need to make sure within the next sort of 20 30 miles or so that you go and get some ad blue and fill up so i'm not going to take all this out but underneath here you've got a set of tools for changing the tire and then here you've got access to your um, engine your 12 volt battery so um, this fan comes with uh, seat warmers not that we've needed to use them yet and um yeah so let's let's yes no, there we go so uh let's move on inside and we'll show you around the inside okay so the first thing is that you have got a bin here which we do actually use slightly annoying that it's not very big so you only need to empty it once a day and we tend to have a separate bag for our uh recycling you have a separate entry point for your uh, entry here it's not handled off the cent the you know the car central locking so this van is really light and it's really light because it's got one two three four different skylights so you're never going to struggle for light in this van which is something that we really like we opted for the fixed bed and that's partly because i'm not a very good sleeper so that this way we know we've got a, this comes with a hypnos mattress we've actually put a mattress topper on top of it and the good thing about this bed is you can see that it's in sort of reclined position at the moment which creates a lot of space but you just simply pull it forward to um, extend it into its full thing so we can leave this made up so i put it back in its reclined position and then that gives you access to the underbed storage which is stupid really because these gas struts would hold the bed up if it had nothing on it which is crazy because of course it's not going to stay up now but you can see all of our storage, our Kadak, and then you've got all of the water pump. And then you've also got here access to all of the fuses. So that's nice and easy to, to access. Um, so that's your storage. That's one of the downsides about this van, that it doesn't have much garage storage. Now, breath now. But what it does have is lots of internal storage. So you can see here for each side we have, we've got a hanging wardrobe. And we've bought these hanging shoe covers, which you can get from our website. And you can see that we just use it to store everything else. And that make, means you're sort of super efficient and tidy. And then here we've got the access to the TV aerial um, and just more storage. We use these plastic boxes everywhere because it makes it really easy to store things and also keep things tidy. And then on this side, you've got a bunch more drawers, three more drawers here. And then here you've also got some more storage, which has got all the important things here, like gin and chocolate at the moment. Um, and yet more storage here. <laughs> this has got crisps in, this is terrible admission. And the mirror, and yes, yeah, so lots and lots of storage, which is really great. And I like this bed. I wish it was wider, but it's a, it's a double bed, but and it's comfortable. Lots of people ask about specific bedding because this is curved but we just got regular double bed bedding we've got the mattress topper we've got a mattress protector they're just regular square things and then we bought these off amazon again you can get these off of our website there's links on there and we and we just use them to pull to pull the um, bedding together you don't even need these so i don't think you should go and spend lots of money buying those specifically curved things because they cost so much money when you can go and spend 20 quid and buy just or you know 50 quid and buy some regular bedding which is what we use and it's perfectly great we don't have any issues with it all bunching up or anything else like that so over here we've got our dometic fridge you can see that we've actually put some tape over these lights because they keep us awake at night 
but this you know what so this is a really good fridge in terms of how much space it is but it's really crazy that you get so few shelves and so few of these and we've looked into buying additional shelves it's ridiculous it was going to cost us like 200 pounds to buy an extra shelf here and an extra shelf here just ridiculous again you can see our fridge has got all the important things some wine um <laughs> and you've obviously got your freezer compartment here which works really well and this is an automatic three-way fridge so when you are driving it's going to work off the 12 volt battery and what it does when you drive is it just keeps the food at the temperature that you've had it at so if you're in the luxurious position of plugging your fridge in the night before then do that but we're not because we store our van on a storage facility so what we do is we just put ice blocks in um, and then put all our food in and then by the time we get to site the food is still cold and then we can just plug it in and then once you put it into if you're plugging it into an electric hookup it's going to charge off your mains and if not make sure you're flat and your gas is on and it will charge off your gas so um, and what we tend to do is put it on high to start with and then put it onto the midpoint once the fridge is at temperature but that works really well we're really pleased with the fridge and there's certainly um, lots of storage and then above the fridge we have some more storage and you can see the uh, solar panel at the back which is showing that the panel is charging at the moment um, this comes with a hundred watt or is it 100, yeah, 100 watt solar panel on the roof one of the extras that came with the van and then down here we've got yet more storage so we keep our dog food or chemicals or whatever and then onto this side we've got our kitchen so this is a pretty decent kitchen a big sink with that standard drainer thing which works reasonably well um, and you can drop this down what i wish with these vans is that they these covers were the same height and the same make as the top so you could genuinely use it as additional work surface but it isn't lots of storage here so we put a like a cheap one pound 50 tesco's utensil rack in because it didn't come with one but that works perfectly well and you can also see that we put this padding on everything because it just keeps things still and then a few more drawers here and then the bottom another drawer for all of our cleaning stuff and then here a big another drawer which has got all our kitchen utensils in and you've also got access to the gas points here for the oven and then this comes with a full-size oven and also a grill and you can see how clean it is because we hardly use it which so i don't think we need that really i we would be happy if it didn't have an oven at all because we use the microwave and it comes with four ring burner one of them is electric which is a really good idea because it means you don't need to use your gas i don't know why more vans don't do that and then as i say we've got our microwave here and there's been lots of reports of people having problems with their microwaves the way it's been built in but we don't use it that much just for briefly heating things up and we haven't any problems two big cupboards here full of lots of junk well food and cups and plates and bowls with lots of these again you can get this on our website to keep everything still which is really good a really cheap and cost effective way of doing that you've got your power connection up here for your microwave which we keep turned off and then lots of led lights throughout just put the lights on so we can see a bit better um lots of space in here you've got two um 240 volt batteries here and then you've got lights for the this area and then a light for the toilet as well so talking of the bathroom let's have a look in the bathroom now the bathroom is one of the compromises that we decided to make on this van and actually we think it was the right compromise because this is an all-in-one bathroom um, where you haven't got a separate shower but to be quite honest it works really well so when you're taking a shower you just um undo this and pull it across and now you've kind of separated off your shower area from your toilet area and that works really well we've never had any issues of anything getting damp or wet and then you can see there's a cabinet that comes with the van and we've put these neck curtain and less elasticated wires across which i really recommend because it means you can leave all your toiletries in the van and it's not going to go flying Again, you can get them off our website um, we've put a link into them there because we've tried to incorporate everything that we think would be useful for you so that's the cupboard and then of course we've got the Thetford toilet which rotates and I'm not going to show you that because you know all about that and you have your toilet roll holder so that's our bathroom and we think that was a good compromise because as I say we don't really use the bathroom 
that much. So let's carry on round to the front of the van. So we've got two seats here, which are really useful and nice and comfortable, comfortably sit for people, especially when you turn around the captain's chairs. And we've put our sniper TV on the wall here. And we've also got um, our Wi-Fi dongle, which we'll talk about in another, um, another episode. And then we've got four lots of storage up here. So, and the same on the other side, one side's got no shelves, one side's got shelves. And as you can see, we use these boxes everywhere. We put a list of, of what's in them so we can find them easily and they're great. And like I say, one of the great things about this van is the amount of storage that it has. Now, all of the windows have got the fly screens as well as the, the full blinds and also curtains if you want to close the curtains. And this, these, this comes forward, so if you want to make this into a, a double bed, you just, I'm not going to do this now, but you pull this forward and that forward, um, and then you flip this over, you flip that over, and it makes it into a double bed, which we have had friends stay. Some more storage under each of these chairs. So one thing I'm to say is that you have your passenger chairs here, which you can make up, and I'll try and put a picture of what these look like, because it's a bit of a faff to make them up. But if you do want to have four people traveling legally, then you've got these proper bed uh, seats here with all the seat belts and everything else. Um, we don't really very often have four people, so we were thinking about taking these out because that will give us quite a lot of extra weight. And then you've got lots of storage here. We've got a coffee maker, bike helmets, rucksacks. There's a lot of space. And then on the other side, you've got also got the slightly more storage, you've got the chair and you've also got um, we've got these vacuum bags with spare sheets and the mattress topper for when we have this bed and then you've also got your drain down system there yeah. for winterizing the van so that's nice and easy to access and that's something that we will be talking about in a future video we're also going to have a winterizing guide if it's not already done on the website if you want to learn more about getting your van ready this van has a it has a well heating system and then you've got your panel for your controls here one of the really silly things about this van is you can't actually tell when things are off and on except if the lights are off and on but it works perfectly well so you've got your heating here that you can just change the um, temperature and then you can switch between your electric hookup or gas or a combination of the two so if you really want a, be a boost in the heating or the water then that's what you would do and then the same with the the water system here and as you can see this comes with a kind of winterizing pack to make sure that um, nothing freezes up in the winter if you can stay connected as many people have said if you're filling up your water don't trust this just fill it up till it overflows underneath and then turn it off this is for the water pump then we've got your internal lights here and then this is the awning light for outside let's just do a final um, sort of wrap up on on our eldest 150 majestic so what do we like about it well i think we really like the space we like the light feel of the van and this front part is really comfortable and it's a good kitchen area what we don't like so much about it is that some things feel a bit flimsy in fact you can see that a bit of the paneling is coming off the wall here um, we've got to take the van back for some warranty, warranty issues so that's one thing they can fix i know that's fairly minor but we've got a couple of other things like the cruise control knob has fallen off and the aerial point was broken here when we got the van and a couple of other things so it could feel a bit more robust but you know at the end of the day this is an entry level van and so you know it, it doesn't we went to see a, an adria yesterday and you can just see the big difference in quality so i think that's one of the one of the things what else don't we like about the van james uh, personally it's the size it's too big for me to drive uh, I'm a bit nervous on that front, uh, so Rob does the majority of the driving. Well, you do the motorway driving, I just do the hairy, windy yeah. roads around Lock Lomond. I do the driving. <laughs> yeah. The bed, I wish it was slightly bigger. And the bathroom, if it was a separate toilet and shower. We just wish that they used some of the same uh, techniques and concepts that other vans do, like in the Adria, where you, you've got that panel that switches across, so it's just really good the use. Swing door shower. Yeah, the swing door, it's just really good use of the space. I think they could be smarter about that. They've probably got a trademark, which is why they can't. I think the we don't really need the oven, so I think it's, that space could be saved. But other than that, I think it's been a really good first van for us. Mm. And yeah. um, it is long. I think the biggest issue isn't so much the length of this van, it's more the width of the van. 
and when you like we were driving around Loch Lomond and sometimes you just kind of had to close your eyes and hope because um not literally but you know what I mean because it was tight and you were right on the on the uh, sort of white line so that's that but other than that I think you know the, the majestic that comes from Mark which, which is where we bought the van is has quite a few upgrades it's got a solar panel it's got the the cruise control and the climate control I mentioned and the Tom Tom it's got a yeah bigger upgrade. bigger engine it's got the fabrics that are supposedly an upgrade and they're uh, pet friendly supposedly like winter pack. yeah winter pack so it's got quite a few upgrades that add on to the price but make the van that much more desirable. kind of desirable one thing I didn't show you again a little bit more storage is just up here above the driver's cab you've got quite big ledges so you can actually put lots of things like up here like we've got our awning pole, pole and uh, umbrellas and so on so that's a little bit more storage so this van definitely has lots of storage I think one good thing actually let me just do this now is that if you do have people stay then you can shut this off and you can create a sense of two rooms okay so that is the Eldis Majestic 150 hope you found this useful anything else any other things you'd like us to show you in the van please leave a comment um, and tell us what if you own an, uh, a 150 what do you like and what don't you like but other than that please hit the subscribe button like this video if you enjoyed it and we will see you next week for the next episode of on the road again